Uh, John Allison is chairman of BB&T Corporation, the 10th largest financial services holding company headquartered in the United States. Uh, Mr. Allison began his service with BB&T in 1971 and has managed a wide variety of responsibilities throughout the bank. He became president of BB&T in 1987 and was elected chairman and CEO in July 1989. During his tenure as CEO from 1989 to, 2000, 1989 to 2008, uh, the institution grew from $4.5 billion to $152 billion in assets. In uh, March 2009, Mr. Allison uh, joined the faculty of Wake Forest University School of Business as Distinguished Professor of Practice. Good afternoon. It's uh, a pleasure to be able to talk to such a distinguished group. In order to uh, understand the cure, I think it's very, very important that we get clear about the cause of the financial problems that we have uh, been experiencing. And I offer you three basic themes. First, the financial crisis is primarily the result of government policies. We do not live in a free market in the United States. We live in a mixed economy. The mixture varies by industry. Technology is probably 80% free, 20% government. Financial services is 70% government, 30% free. It's not surprising the most regulated part of the economy caused our problems. Secondly, government policies created a bubble in the residential real estate market that was then deflated, as bubbles always do. That deflation was transmitted in the capital markets and then ultimately into the economy in general. And then finally, a number of market participants made serious errors that made the crisis worse but they were secondary to government policy. How did we get here? We overbuilt residential real estate. We built $800 billion too much residential real estate. We built too many houses, too big a houses, built houses in the wrong place. We should have been investing in technology, in manufacturing capacity, in education. We should have saved more and spent less. How did we make an error of that magnitude? Three primary culprits uh, were the Federal Reserve, the FDIC and government housing policy, specifically Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Um, interesting observation, 1913, the monetary system in the United States was nationalized. The government owns a monetary system. If you have a failure in the monetary system, it is by definition a failure of government policy. If interstate highway bridges were falling down, you say, well, that, the government owns the highways. If you're having problems in the monetary system, the Federal Reserve owns it. It owns it. The Fed was created in theory to reduce volatility in the economic system. In fact, they reduce short-term volatility and create greater volatility in the long term. The Fed itself will admit it was one of the primary causes of the Great Depression. Uh, what happens in a free market, we're not omniscient, we make mistakes, markets are constantly correcting, businesses failing, businesses being created. If you take out that failure process, try to truncate down the, the short-term downside, you push the problems into the future. Specifically, Greenspan made some very serious mistakes in monetary policy in the early 2000s. He created negative real interest rates, and only the Federal Reserve can create a negative real interest rate. A negative real interest rate is when the rate of inflation is above the, above the interest rate. Inflation was running 2 to 3 percent. You could borrow money at 1 percent. You cannot create a bigger incentive to borrow than that. Secondly, Bernanke screwed up. He created an inverted yield curve. He raised the interest rates the fastest in history uh, and created what's called an inverted yield curve, which is where short-term rates are higher than long-term rates. Markets never invert yield curves. That was very destructive to the banking businesses. Banking's bar short, lend long. If you can't make money doing that, what do you do? You move out on the risk curve. That was reinforced by the Federal Reserve's own projection about the economy. Fed models did not show we were even going to have a recession, much less a recession like this. Banks moved out the, the risk curve because Bernanke had inverted the yield curve. Um, we simply could not have had a bubble in the housing market unless the, the Fed provided the money. They printed the money. The second cause, FDIC insurance, sounds benign. It's a huge uh, destructor of market discipline and it creates a, uh, a lot of lack of discipline in the marketplace. Some concrete examples. Lots of community banks have failed in Atlanta, a market we operate in. We just took over a few months ago one of those community banks. It's a very typical story. About 10 guys get together who are in the hotel business. They raise a little capital. They leverage that capital dramatically using FDIC insurance to buy CDs. CDs that people would not have put in that bank without the insurance, and they paid way above market rates. They took that money, turned it around, and lent it to all their friends who went broke in the, housing, in the, in the hotel business. On a bigger scale, uh, every large financial institution that's fundamentally failed, from Washington Mutual to Countrywide to, to Golden West, uh, 
uh, Andy Mac all raised deposits very dramatically using above market rates for deposit insurance. A lot of them built branches. We were competing against them, paid above market rates. Typical consumer didn't care because they had FDIC insurance. They used that money to make high risk loans. No way you could have had the negative amortization mark of loans, uh, so called pick a payment uh, loans without FDIC insurance. Huge market uh, uh, destruct destructor. Then the, the um, the proximate cause was government housing policy, and this really goes back a long time. The government has tried to encourage home ownership above the natural market rate, uh, and that sounds good. Owning homes is a good thing, except encouraging people to buy too big of houses, houses they can't afford, young people to buy houses, people to speculate in the market is not a good thing. Uh, the the uh, what I'd call the immediate event or immediate cause was a decision by Bill Clinton made in September of 1999 when he set a goal for Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae to have at least half their loan portfolio in, in affordable housing now, now subprime. A number of economists, uh, uh, including some liberal economists, said, well, boy, that's risky. If you look at the legitimate affordable housing market, it is not that big. And if Freddie and Fannie reach their goals, uh, it could jeopardize their financial well-being, and that could take out the U.S. financial system. It could happen in 10 years, and nine years later it did. It did. Freddie and Fannie, giant government-sponsored enterprises, would never exist in a free market. Uh, uh, they, they relied on the government guarantee of their capital. They had the lowest cost of capital. They basically drove everybody first out of the prime business. We were in the prime mortgage business. You cannot compete with the government because it has a lower cost of capital. And then they created the broker model because they were trying to originate enough mortgages to fill in their affordable housing goals. That spilled over into the capital markets and other people followed their model, but they created that model. Uh, when Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae went down, they were leveraged 1,000 to 1. They had $1,000 of debt for every dollar in equity. They owed $5 trillion that you now owe. Congratulations. Uh, I was on a committee of financial services roundtable for nine years trying to do something about Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Uh, financial Services Roundtable was the 100 largest financial institutions in, a, in America. We met with Congress on a number of occasions. It was a very frustrating exercise. The really bad guy was a guy named Barney Frank, which I'm sure you've all heard of. <laughs> very bad guy. Um, it was an interesting conversation. They absolutely refused to do anything about Freddie Mac although, and Fannie Mae, although we could run the numbers, and it was mathematically certain they were going broke. I mean, anybody in here that has anything, just the slightest understanding of math, said, these guys are going broke, these guys are going broke. They refused to do anything about Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae for two basic reasons. One, they had a religious belief in affordable housing beyond it was on faith, uh, kind of religious belief in affordable housing. And secondly, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae were two of the big, were the biggest contributors, two of the biggest contributors to the Republican and Democratic parties both. Um, we could not, the reason we had a bubble in general is because the Federal Reserve printed the money. The reason it ended up in housing because of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Um, in terms of uh, cures, uh, first, I, 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 lots of market participants did make mistakes, and those market participants should have, should have the consequences, but I think we need to really reflect on what our long-term strategy ought to be. If I were in charge, and I'm not, uh, if I were in charge, I would really move to a private bank banking system based on a market-based monetary standard. <laughs> That, market, that standard would probably be gold, not because gold is magical, but because it's hard to find and expensive to dig up. You can't just print it. If the Federal Reserve continues to exist, it is irrational to believe that politicians will discipline themselves. And the only way they can finance huge deficits ultimately is the Federal Reserve to print the money. And we will eventually go bankrupt, in some sense the word, hyperinflation. It might take 20, 25 years, but there's no reason to believe that politicians will, will impose discipline. And that's the real risk of having a Federal Reserve. Now, we're not going to do that, so let me offer you a practical solution. It's a four-part part solution that could easily be executed. Part number one, raise the capital standards significantly for banks. And I think banks ought to be at least 25% equity. Give banks long enough time to, to raise that capital that would shift the risk from the taxpayers to the, to the shareholders, which is where it ought to be in a marketplace economy. Banks that couldn't raise capital would have to shrink. That would be the answer, what do you do about too big to fail? Either Citigroup could raise the capital or get smaller. That would be their, their choices. By the way, in my career, Citigroup has failed three times, been bailed out, and every time they've gotten bigger and worse. To believing they won't do anything different this time is pretty crazy. Um, secondly, uh, either eliminate, they're not going to do that, but reduce FDIC insurance back to $100,000. It is a very perverse incentive in the marketplace. Thirdly, make it absolutely illegal for the Federal Reserve to bail anybody out that's not a commercial bank. 
one of the primary drivers in TARP that people don't talk about was the Federal Reserve was really worried about General Electric failing. General Electric was a high-risk lender. They were financing the commercial paper market. They were going to fail. The Federal Reserve bailed out the commercial paper operations and kept them in business. It is absolutely irrational for the Federal Government to be bailing out General GMAC. GMAC created a lot of problems in the automobile business. They invented the seven-year, 100% car loan, so everybody owes more on their car than it's worth. That's one of the problems in the automobile. They're doing the same thing right today. The Federal Reserve shouldn't be allowed to bail out non banks. And finally, uh, eliminate at least 90 percent of the regulations that impact the industry. That's what makes the industry so inefficient. Eliminate about 90 percent of those regulations. What we actually ought to be doing, instead of, instead of increasing regulations, we ought to be moving very aggressively to a freer market and we ought to impose market discipline. Thank you very much.